morning. Happy Tuesday and happy first day of September. Happy September, y'all, and welcome to Lit Class. Um, so yesterday, we talked all about plot structure, how at the beginning of stories, we learn background information, we hear the exposition, right, and how the story starts to get a little bit more exciting, there's rising action, and then there's the climax of a story, the moment we've been waiting for, and then the story is resolved, right? So that's a very basic plot structure. Now today, we're going to focus in on number one a little bit, okay? So let's review. Exposition is background info at the beginning of a story, and it includes three things. Ready? One, two, three. Exposition, background info, character setting conflict. Character setting conflict. Let's do that again. Exposition, background information, includes character setting conflict. Today, I want to focus on characters. Characters are perhaps the most important part of stories, right? We relate to them. We get to know them. We watch them grow up before our very eyes and become caterpillars, not caterpillars. They become butterflies, right? Characters, they encounter problems. They stumble. They fall. They learn from their mistakes, just like you and I. Characters are so important to, to really good stories. So, I want to talk today about characters. So, yesterday we took notes on plot structure. Go ahead and go to your next page. In my notebook, that's actually page number 17. And at the top, please write character. All right, hit pause if you need more time. So, I want to uh, make sure that when I say these two terms, you know what I'm talking about. And the first term is the protagonist. So go ahead and jot down that, that word in your notebook. The protagonist is the main character of the story. Okay? Um, can you think about the very hungry caterpillar? The very hungry caterpillar is the main character. Avatar the Last Airbender, Aang, is the main character. So when I say the word protagonist, I mean the main character of the story. Sometimes that might be the hero, Superman. He's a hero. That story is about Superman. All right, so there are protagonists. That's the main character. There's also an antagonist. All right, so an antagonist is a force that opposes the central character. All right, so go ahead and jot those down in your notebook and hit pause if you need more time. I have a few examples that I think will help uh, to solidify this in your mind. Okay, so the protagonist is the main character. The antagonist, a lot of times, is the bad guy. Okay, but not always. And that's why we say it is a force that opposes the central character. So let me give you an example. The Wizard of Oz. I'm sure you have seen that movie, or you've at least heard of it. Dorothy would be... The protagonist or the antagonist? Well, she's the protagonist. She's the main character, right? She uh, gets caught in a tornado, right? And ends up in the land of Oz. So she is the main character. Can you think of who the evil character is? The force that opposes Dorothy? Well, that's the Wicked Witch of the West, right? So, protagonist, main character, antagonist, uh, something against the main character. A lot of times, it will be an evil supervillain. All right, but not always, and I have an example of that for you. If it helps, the word pro means for, and the word anti means against. So if you think about it, the antagonist is uh, a character or a force that goes against the protagonist. All right? So anti, it's, you know, think about somebody might antagonize you, right? They're being kind of annoying. They're being confrontational. So anti means against. Protagonist, main character. Antagonist, villain. 
That, that might be an easy way to keep them straight in your mind. Let's look at another example. Do you know who these people are? So over on the left, we have Team Rocket. And over on the right, we have Ash Ketchum and Pikachu. Who is the protagonist? The main character, the, uh, the focus of the story is Ash Ketchum in Pallet Town. And he is trying to catch all the Pokemon. He's going to catch them all. And he's going to be the greatest Pokemon trainer of all time. Now, Team Rocket, on the other hand, opposes Ash and is constantly trying to steal his Pikachu. So they are antagonizing him. They are the antagonists. Let's look at a different example. The Rainbow Fish. Who's the main character in the Rainbow Fish? Well, it's the Rainbow Fish. So the Rainbow Fish is the protagonist. But is there, like, a supervillain? In the Rainbow Fish, it's not like there's some evil whale that is, you know, hogging all the water or something, right? Think about it. Who's the bad guy in the Rainbow Fish? Well, it's the Rainbow Fish, right? The Rainbow Fish is selfish. So in this story, the antagonist is not a character. There's no super evil villain, right? I mean, think back. Team Rocket, they're bad. Right? They're just evil. The rainbow fish is the main character, and he's just selfish. So in this case, we would probably say that the rainbow fish is the protagonist, and his selfishness, his self-centeredness, would be the antagonist. Now I'm intrigued. When we were taking our notes, did you copy down those examples? I think that would be very helpful. When we go through story examples, I would jot them down. So Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz, she's the protagonist, she's the main character, and the witch, she works against Dorothy, right? Because anti means against. Whereas the rainbow fish, he is the main character, but then his selfishness, it would be the antagonist, right? It's not, in that story, there's no character right? That's evil, right? The thing that holds Rainbow Fish back, the thing that keeps him from having friends is his selfishness. And that is exactly why our definition says an antagonist is a force that goes against the main character. It's not always a character that opposes the main character. It's not always a supervillain. Sometimes it might be that character being selfish or self-centered or being obnoxious, Okay, so anywho, always a good idea when we are going through examples to take really good notes. If you need more time, go ahead and hit pause. Okay, we've got two more terms to copy down into our notebook, and those are static characters and dynamic characters. So let's start with static. A static character stays the same. Okay, static, same. A dynamic character changes significantly. They change a lot. Go ahead and copy that down in your notebook and we'll look at some examples. Okay, so static stays the same. Dynamic changes. Okay, static, same. Static, same. Dynamic changes. Dynamic changes. So a static character stays the same. Let's think about Peter Parker. Peter Parker is just kind of a normal kid, kind of a nerd, and he gets bit by a spider. And then he realizes, oh, I can start shooting webs. He becomes Spider-Man. Does Peter Parker stay the same? No. He physically changes a lot. He changes significantly. So is he static? We would say no. Peter Parker, a.k.a. Spider-Man, would be a dynamic character. It's a character that changes over the course of the story. I have a bonus question for you. Who would be the protagonist of Spider-Man? Spider-Man, obviously, right? Spider-Man is the main character. Very good. Let's look at another example. The Rainbow Fish. Is the Rainbow Fish stay the same or does he change? 
Well, if you think about it, at the beginning of the story, Rainbow Fish is very selfish. By the end of the story, he decides to give his scales away. Is that a pretty big change? I would say so. The Rainbow Fish changes a lot. Static, same. Dynamic, change. So the Rainbow Fish would be a dynamic character. Okay? Internally, the Rainbow Fish changed. His personality changed. His mindset changed. Right? Instead of being selfish, he chose to be selfless, to be giving. So we would call him a dynamic character. Let's think about the evil stepmother in Cinderella. At the beginning of the, the movie and, you know, the Brothers Grimm tale, the evil stepmother is really mean. She makes Cinderella do all the chores. At the end of the story, she's still really mean. She uh, finds out that Cinderella went to the ball, and she is, you know, very dismissive of her. Right? She is still just very mean throughout the whole story. Static, same, dynamic, change. So we would say the evil stepmother stays the same. So she is a static character. So once again, we have our four terms today. Protagonist, antagonist, static character, dynamic character. Those are the important terms. You might notice I put little bullet points. You might even put stars next to them because those are really important terms. If you had a highlighter, you could even highlight those terms. And then, of course, I record all of the examples we go through as a class. That would be a great way to take notes. Okay? Taking notes is a really important skill that we want to practice. And the only way to get better is by doing it. So I encourage you, take good notes, and if you need more time to copy them down, hit pause. Now I want to play a game. So at the very bottom of my notes, I wrote the word game, and then I numbered my paper 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You don't need a ton of space for this game, okay, so you don't need to skip a line or anything, but go ahead and write game underneath your notes for today. Let's go to number 1. Kim Possible. Is she the protagonist? Or the antagonist. I will race you. So number one, I want you to write out the whole word because that is the only way to get better at spelling. I guess it's not the only way you can spell it out loud, but it is a great way to get better at spelling. So Kim Possible, protagonist or antagonist? Let's go on to number two. Hit pause if you need more time. Shigo and Dr. Draken, protagonist or antagonist? And again, I encourage you, write out the whole word, because that is how you get better at spelling. Okay, let's go back to number one. Kim Possible, she is the main or central character, which makes her the protagonist. Now, how about Shigo and Dr. Dragon? They oppose Kim and are constantly trying to take over the world. So they would be antagonists. Let's move on to number three. Aladdin. Is Aladdin a static character or a dynamic character? Let's think about this. At the beginning of the story, Aladdin is a thief. Only cares about number one. Only cares about himself. By the end of the story, he could have wished for something for himself, but instead, he sets the genie free. He thinks of others. So ask yourself, does Aladdin stay the same, or does he change? Okay. It seems like Aladdin changes a lot. He is selfish at first, but then by the end of the story, he is selfless and thinks about the genie before himself. So that makes him a dynamic character. Very good. Number four, Mr. Krabs loves money. That's all he thinks about. He's so cheap, he doesn't even pay attention. That's how he is all the time. Always. So is he a static character or a dynamic character? Take a second. Mr. Krabs stays the same. Static 
same. So he would be a static character. Let's look at Phineas, Ferb, and Perry the Platypus. Are they protagonists or antagonists? Have you ever seen Phineas and Ferb? One of my all-time favorite shows. So are they protagonists or antagonists? Hit pause if you need more time. Let's look at number six, Dr. Doofenshmirtz. Would he be a protagonist or an antagonist? Let's go back to number five. So Phineas, Ferb, and Perry, they are the central characters of the story. Right? They are the main characters, so they would be the protagonists. Dr. Doofenshmirtz opposes them, so that would make him the antagonist. Very good. Let's go to number seven. We've got John Smith, and let me read a little bit of this conversation to you. So right here, we've improved the lives of savages all over the world. And Pocahontas says, savages? N not that you're a savage, just my people. Okay, so at the beginning of the story, it seems like John Smith has a certain opinion of the Native Americans. He thinks that they are savage, uncivilized. But then by the end of the story, he's willing to take a bullet for the Native Americans. So at the beginning of the story, he believes that they are uncivilized. By the end of the story, he's willing to lay down his life to protect these people. Would you say that he is static or dynamic? I would say he's pretty dynamic. I would say he changes a lot. I think John Smith realizes that the Native Americans are not the ones who were behaving uncivilized. Maybe it, were, or maybe it was the settlers who came and dug up land that wasn't theirs and tried to find gold. Maybe they were the ones who were behaving uncivilized. Maybe they shouldn't, you know, try to kill the people that live there. Maybe they should try to work with them, you know, like civilized people. Anywho, number eight, we have Governor Ratcliffe from Pocahontas. Is Governor Ratcliffe a protagonist or an antagonist? All right. And if you haven't seen Pocahontas, maybe you don't know. Pocahontas is a great movie, by the way. Governor Ratcliffe would be an antagonist because he opposes um, the main characters. He opposes John Smith and Pocahontas. He opposes the Native Americans. All right, so he would be a force that goes against. Remember, anti means against. So very good. For homework, I want you to make sure you have all of these terms memorized. These seven are from yesterday, and these four, protagonist, main character, antagonist, villain, force against the protagonist, static character, static characters stay the same, dynamic character, characters that change. Make sure you have all these memorized. I recommend making flashcards. There is nothing that you need to turn in for this. However you do need to make sure that you have drilled these and that you have them mastered. If I saw you walking down the hallway and I said exposition, I expect that you rattled off immediately. <laughs> Background info at the beginning of the story includes character, setting, conflict. What is a conflict? A problem. Rising action. Events that create suspense. What is the climax? The moment we've all been waiting for. The turning point. Resolution. The uh, conflict gets resolved. I expect that you have them like that. Setting, where the story takes place, when the story takes place. Pew, pew, pew. All right. I hope you guys have a fabulous Tuesday. I'm looking forward to class tomorrow. Uh, check my post. I'm planning on having live class with you all tomorrow. So you will see uh, what time we will be doing that. And I'm hoping that we can start writing some short, short, short stories together. All right. So I can't wait. Keep being awesome. Memorize those terms. Very proud to teach you.